about it but uh, t uh, 2006 I think was when I started and it was um, it came about through my day job as such where I was working as a, a voice coach a telephone coach and somebody I was coaching said to me you'd be great on radio and he already was working on Hawkesbury radio doing Saturday morning so he introduced me to uh, Yvonne and from there um, they, gave, they offered me the, the rock and blues show which was already established by James and uh, James Glenn Denning mainly for many years. So it was a great gig to get. It was, um, I was a bit of a rookie for a little while filling in other people's shows and then lo and behold I got off with this great gig. Excellent. And, mm. and did that introduce you to the blues or were you already... Well I guess um, my husband and I were involved in music, we're musicians and uh, I actually play drums and sing oh, yeah. and he plays a guitar and we've got a little band called Working Poor um, mm -hmm. and it's kind of evolved into more of a blues thing. I guess we used to do I guess more poppy rock songs and uh, being given the, the rock and blues show gave me a license to do rock or blues, play rock or blues. But the blues kind of evolved because um, yeah I guess I became uh, more involved with the blues because I was sent so many blues CDs. And apart from that, I loved the blues, I loved the basis of the blues, I loved all of the older blues uh, performers such as Muddy Waters and uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan and some of the formative guys and even some of the really old blues. Um, so starting to talk to people about Australian blues was really great. Yeah. Um, Lloyd Spiegel I actually was uh, introduced to fairly early in my, my musical career in the blues. Started playing Lloyd... Um, yeah, oh, gosh, I'd say a couple of years after starting the show, and and promoted his his concerts and things like that. Mm. So yeah. Yeah. Does he come up here very often? Uh, I I do a lot of telephone interviews, based okay. because we're so far away from a lot of people here in okay. Windsor. Some people have come into the studio and played live, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. In fact, last week I had a live um, act in, in the studio. Uh, which was fantastic. Um, so yeah, it's 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 always interesting. I think talking to the musicians that are out there, yeah. and often they're actually on tour. So you'll phone them up, and they'll be in a bus somewhere, going from somewhere to somewhere. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> or they've just finished a gig, and they're you know, wiping the sweat off their brow, and like, hi, Kathy, how are you? You know, the great. interviews I've done, a lot of which I have recorded, but I've mm. chatted to some great musos, yeah, such as. Um, um, Kevin Boric, who's oh. one of my favourites, he's a lovely guy um, from Queensland, um, Diesel, oh, but you know, the list is kind of endless. But what I find is the interviews um, follow a certain path where I talk to people about how they got into the music in the first place. And from there it just, uh, you know, I guess um, my love of the, the, the music is, is such that I'll sort of say to them, okay, well, tell me how you write. And, you know, I'll get right into the, the, the brain of the, the muso and um, I really enjoy that part of it. I love it. I love that part. Because so, you're a musician yourself. Yes. Um, what do you gain from other musicians? Like, what? Well, I guess it's some sort of an insight. Um, I guess you touch, touch base with them on a level that you understand what they're talking about when they say, you know, when we all get together and everything clicks you know there's something some sort of 
magic that goes on with this particular group that we're playing with. And I can relate to that because, you know, I guess as a muser I've played with groups of people where things have all clicked. In fact, this track that I'm playing right at this moment is, is one of our old um, bands. I'll, I'm actually singing the next track after this oh, one, great. which has helped me, um, mm. which I was planning to give a spin tonight, just because we, my husband dug it out and said, why don't you take this in? It's, mm. um, I think I can get away with it because the band's not really out there playing or selling anything with it. It's just a topic from the past yeah. called Tramway Junction, actually. But um, these guys are great musicians and have learned so much from other musicians as a musician. Mm. So I can interview them from a level where there's some understanding of what's going on rather than, I guess, just as a listener of the music. You're, yeah. you're talking to them about the instruments or the inspiration for the lyric. Do they write the lyrics first? Do they write the riffs first? What do they, you know, how do they do it? Yeah. What's the process? It's very interesting. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I, from what I've seen is that it is such a specialised area mm. that um, the, pe the listeners themselves know exactly what's going on. So it's, it's more like an art form with guitars. Well, it, it tracks... From what I've seen. Exactly. I, I guess Stormy Monday was one of the really early uh, great blues shows that, you know, led the way, really. When was that on? Oh, gosh, that was... <laughs> I haven't done my research, no, but it's fine. like many, many years ago. I think if you Googled Stormy Monday and um, it, it w went on for years, I think um, going back to the, probably to the 80s. Uh, and, and yeah, it was, it was one of those stations that you, once you found it and you heard it, um, they were playing great blues and you couldn't, you couldn't hear it anywhere else. So you'd tune in every Monday night to hear it, sort of thing. How are you this evening? You are on Hawkesbury Radio, and I'm Kathy Bourne, and this is the Rock and Blues Show. Great to be back with you again this evening. Uh, I'll be with you from 10 till midnight tonight. And before I forget to say a very big thank you to Guy, uh, he's just leaving us, uh, leaving the studio this evening. Have a great evening, Guy. Uh, what a stirrer he is, I tell you what. Really bad. I used to actually network a lot more, and I guess I've just become really busy. In yeah. my life in general. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. And also, it's quite overwhelming because you do get, you know, I'm working um, a full time job in the government, so plus I have all of my adult children, grandchild, and a nephew living at home with me who has a disability. So oh. life's become a little bit busier. When I first started the show, whenever I got a CD, and I, I'd usually get an email or something, I'd reply and I'd give feedback and I'd kind of. I do network with people. I do basically invite people to come on, on the show and do a chat to air, especially if I really like their stuff. Um, or if people are really, you know, persistent and get hold of me via email or phone or whatever, and then yes, I'll see up and give you some chats to air. But also, I guess leading up to events like the Blues Festival, often get people who are going to be appearing at the Blues Festival to help to promote the the artists, you know, performing in the local area. Um, Do you mind if I put that bit in about that your son is dis disabled? Or? Disability? Yeah. No, he's my nephew. Oh, he's your nephew, yeah. Because yeah. um, I find, it, like, when I first started with, with Community Radio, that yeah. all the people involved are just these most wonderful people that have struggles with their lives the and challenges yeah. and yeah. they can always come in and volunteer and they're doing a huge service by yeah. being with community radio and that's what I want to show people in the, in the big outside world that community radio is just full of amazing people I'll tell you what I could say from beginning say, to end Chris, um, just before Christmas we had both, both our daughter and granddaughter and Eddie moved back in with us. So kind of, our life kind of flipped back into going from almost empty nesters to yeah. full house again. Right. Which was, actually, it's been really great. To, to be honest with you, it's a beautiful thing to have all your children and your granddaughter. Family, yeah. And an extra lad in the house. Cause yeah. It's a bit dominated by females at the moment. Yeah. We've got three daughters and a granddaughter. <laughs> My husband's probably grateful for a bit of male um, company. <laughs> Um, but yeah, look, I mean, I think life is, I guess what I would say about life is it's easy to, to make um, excuses for yourself sometimes when I'm really, you know, tired, busy, uh, overwhelmed with stuff at, at home. 
I am tempted to phone in and say, listen, can you find someone to do my show for me? But honestly, you get you really get hooked in not only in the fact that you know that you've got some listeners out there who are have given you feedback and let you know that they really love listening to the blues, they really love your show. Mm -hmm. They'll phone in and say, hey, I listen every you know, Thursday night, I really look forward yeah. to it. So you've got that side to it. But there's also the reinvigoration you get when you actually get in here behind this desk with, I don't know what it is, because you can choose what you're playing. You are going out to air, so I guess there's a little bit of a egotistical thing involved there to some extent, but not really, because you kind of get lost in, in this time of just, chilling out. I used to record all my shows and listen back and I found that when I listened back to them I enjoyed them much more because I could just sort of get lost in the, the couple of hours of the music and, and review it as such. Mm. But um, yeah, it depends on whether I'm organised or I bring my CDs with me. So. Mm. But no, it's, it's great. I love it. It's um, it's an escape and it's, um, it's given me a lot of good friends and connections in the music world. Mm. Um, yeah, I don't think I, I've thought about giving it up sometimes and then I think, no, I can't, I can't give it up, I love it too much. Yeah, yeah.